Hello everyone, welcome back. In the previous presentations, we have seen about tuple relational calculus, the formal definition, and we have solved some queries in tuple relational calculus. In this presentation, we are going to focus on the second form of relational calculus, the domain relational calculus. Let's directly step into the domain relational calculus. We know very well relational calculus is having two forms. The first one is the tuple relational calculus, which we have already seen elaborately in the previous presentation. In this presentation, we are going to focus on the domain relational calculus, which is the second form of relational calculus. In the tuple relational calculus, we have seen the records are fetched tuple by tuple and then according to the condition, then they are placed in the result. We know basically a relation is composed of rows and columns. To be precise, tuples and attributes. Tuple represents the row, attributes represent the column. So what I mean to say here is, in domain relational calculus, the records were fetched tuple by tuple. So a particular row or a tuple is chosen, then the condition is checked. If the condition is satisfied, then that record or that row will be inserted into the result table. That is the result. So row by row, the data are fetched and then they are checked for the condition. If the condition is matching, then it is placed into the result. So how tuple relational calculus is differing from domain relational calculus? Actually, in domain relational calculus, we are going to focus on the domain variables. In other words, we are going to focus on the columns where we are going to focus on attributes or columns by setting the domain variables. I know things will be unclear at this moment, but once we see the formal definition, then it will be easy for you to understand. So from this, we understood that tuple relational calculus retrieves the data row by row, whereas domain relational calculus retrieves the data column by column. Anyway, the final output is going to be a relation only, which contains rows and columns according to the data that we are fetching. So it can be confirmed that both tuple relational calculus and domain relational calculus are closely related to each other. Only difference is in tuple relational calculus, we are going to use tuple variables for fetching the data tuple by tuple. I mean row by row. Here we are going to retrieve the data attribute by attribute by setting domain variables. And this domain relational calculus is the theoretical basis for QBE. I mean query by example. What do we mean by query by example? This QBE is one of the database query languages for relational database. And this is the first graphical query language. And originally this QBE is developed for retrieving the data from the database. And later it was extended to insert the data, delete the data or update the data even to create a temporary table as well. The well-known example that uses QBE is Microsoft Access, where we supply the queries in the form of commands and we can see the graphical output. So this is about QBE. Now let's see the formal definition of domain relational calculus. Let's see how an expression is defined in domain relational calculus. So this is the set of all domain variables x1, x2 up to xn such that Predicate of x1, x2 up to xn are true. In tuple relational calculus, we used set of all tuples t such that the predicate on the tuple t is true. But here, we are not using tuple by tuple representation. Rather, we are going to focus on attribute by attribute. Say, for example, if we have 10 attributes in a relation and we want the result to contain all attributes, then we are supposed to define 10 domain variables where x1, x2, x3 up to xn are domain variables and the condition for all these domain variables must be true. I hope things are clear to you now. And that's why I told you both are closely related except the fact that domain relational calculus are going to use domain variables where these domain variables are set on the attributes. So we are aware that both tuple relational calculus and domain relational calculus are closely related. So this formula is also holding true. Can you see here this x1, x2 up to xn belongs to the relation R. What do we mean by this? It means there are n attributes on the relation R where x1, x2 up to xn are the domain variables or domain constants. And coming to the second one where x which is a domain variable can be compared with another domain variable y. Say for example in loan relation the loan branch and in the account relation, the account branch can be checked. 
So we need some comparison operators in order to perform these kind of checking, right? So we have less than, less than or equal to, equal to, not equal to, greater than and greater than or equal to symbols or operators to perform these comparison. So left hand side is the domain variable. Right hand side can also be another domain variable. And in the middle, we can use these operators to perform the comparison. So is there any condition that the right hand side should always be another domain variable? There are some instances where we need to give some specific constant. Say for example, salary is equal to 10,000. Here 10,000 is not a domain variable, rather it is a constant. So this is also possible. X, the domain variable can be compared with a constant as well. I hope things are clear to you now. If you are directly watching Domain Relational Calculus, I request you to watch Tuple Relational Calculus to understand the basics and then if you come to this lecture, then you will be able to understand most of the things easily. In Tuple Relational Calculus, we have seen some rules. Likewise, here also we have some rules. Let's now see the Domain Relational Calculus rules. What's the first rule? The first rule is an atom is a formula. We have already seen an atom. For example, S belongs to R where S is a domain variable. Then the second one is, if P1 is a formula, then so are negation of P1 and P1. We have already seen about this in the tuple relational calculus. The only difference is, in tuple relational calculus, we worked on tuples, whereas in domain relational calculus, we are going to focus on the domain variables. To be precise, at the attribute level, not at the tuple level. If P1 and P2 are formulae, then so are P1 or P2, P1 and P2 and P1 implies P2. In other words, if P1, then P2. For example, A is equal to B and A is equal to C. Already P1 is a formula and P2 is another formula. We can use this OR operator or AND operator as well. We want to negate, of course, we can use negation only if P1 is a formula. Then coming to the next one. If P1 of X is a formula in X, where X is a free domain variable, then we may use there exist X, P1 of X and for all X, P1 of X. What do we mean by this? We have already confirmed that P1 of X is a formula where this X represents a domain variable and this is a free domain variable. In such a case, we can use there exist X, P1 of X and for all X, P1 of X. I mean to say, Simply, if P1 of X is a formula in X, then we can use the existential quantifier as well as the universal quantifier. We can also use like this. There exists ABC. For the predicate ABC is true, then this can also be represented as there exists A, open parenthesis, there exists B, open parenthesis, there exists C. For the predicate ABC is true. So we are done with the basics of the domain relational calculus and the rules. Before we sign out, let's see the safety of expressions like we have seen in tuple relational calculus. But this time we are going to see the safety of expressions in domain relational calculus. Can we write an expression just like that in domain relational calculus? I will show you one expression. Here we are going to retrieve columns i, n, d, s, where these columns i, n, d and s are belonging to the relation instructor. And what is the important thing to note here is, we have a negation for this. Is this expression fine? If there is no negation, this is perfectly fine. Because we are going to retrieve the columns i, n, d and s from the relation instructor. Right, so this is perfectly valid. But if we have a negation here, what is the problem? This expression allows values in the result that are not in the domain of the expression. So we may end up in an infinite relation where the records we are getting are not from the instructor relation where in our database we may have n number of relations, other relations. Say for example, we may have course relation, we may have department relation, we may have subject thought relation and many more. So in such a case, we may be ending up in generating the results which is infinite in nature. So we must take meticulous care in writing an expression in both domain relational calculus as well as tuple relational calculus. So from this it's clear that this is an unsafe expression. So we should not permit expressions like this. And that's it guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation and thank you for watching.